Hello, my name is Jared, and I've got my drink here and my sweat rag because I tend to do one with the other. And I'm going to tell you a story of a woman scorned. I'm going to tell you the story of Medea. So our hero Jason is traveling to Colchis aboard his ship, the Argo. He's along with his men, who are most commonly known as the Argonauts. They're in search for the Golden Fleece, which, for those who don't know, is the fleece of a golden winged ram, and the Golden Fleece is a symbol of authority and kingship. Jason's uh, uncle, King Peleus, is sitting upon the throne of Iolcus, and he makes uh, Jason an offer. He says, go retrieve the Golden Fleece, prove your worth, and you will ascend to the throne. And Jason is like, challenge accepted. Jason and his Argonauts arrive at Colchis, and the Golden Fleece is just chilling on an oak tree. But here's the rub. At the base of the tree, there's a dragon whose fiery breath could reduce any man to ash. And the king of Colchis, Aedas, is known quickly to kill anyone who trespasses on his land. So Jason does the sensible thing. He asks permission. Jason enters King Aedas' palace, and standing next to his throne, he notices the king's beautiful daughter, Medea, who happens to be a powerful sorceress. And she's like, hi, I'm Medea. I'm a powerful sorceress. Jason then asks the king for the golden fleece, and the king is like, okay, you want the fleece? If you complete these three tasks, it's yours. First, Jason, you have to yoke two fire-breathing oxen to a plow. Then you have to sow a field with the teeth of a dragon, which will sprout an army that you will need to destroy. Jason mulls it over for a second, and he's like, okay. Now, back on Mount Olympus, the goddesses Hera and Athena had watched Jason's adventures unfold, and they decided to help him. They asked Eros, god of love, to make Medea fall head over heels in love with Jason, and Eros was like, okay. Jason's making his way back to his boys when Medea appears to him and tells him, Listen, I'm going to help you on your quest. I will totally help you if you take me far away from my father and marry me. Jason thinks about it for a minute and he's like, Yeah, not only will I marry you, but I'll be faithful and love you for the rest of my life. Medea then hands Jason a chalice with a, a blood-colored liquid. Here, drink this and it will protect you from the flames of the creatures. Jason is then able to yoke the ox to the plow unarmed. So Medea then hands him a rock. She's like, listen, throw this in the middle of where you sow the dragon's teeth. This will make all of the dragon zombie soldiers fight each other over the rock. They're kind of stupid. So, with the help of Medea, Jason was able to complete the tasks. Jason then goes back to King Aedas for the fleece. But Aedas was like... Nope. I was never planning on giving you the fleece anyway. It's kind of a dick, you know what I mean? So at this point, Jason's pissed and he's trying to figure out what to do. Medea says, just steal it. Don't be afraid of the dragon. I got you. And of course, the dragon is huge. But Medea says some hocus pocus and extracted the sap of the branch of a juniper tree, put the dragon asleep. Night night. Jason then grabs the golden fleece and with Medea, they run towards the Argo to escape. Now on the way, for some reason, she grabs her half-brother Ab Abistrus as a hostage in hopes of holding back their dad, King Aedas, who's already after them. Now the Argonauts are moving their asses, they're sailing quickly as possible, but Aedas is gaining on them. Medea, she starts to panic, knowing Aedas will kill Jason, so in hopes of stopping Dad, she grabs her brother, Abistrus, stabs him through the heart, cuts his head off, chops him up, throws him overboard. And naturally, this has the desired effect, because Aedas loses his shit when he sees chunks of his son's body, including his floating head, drift by, and he stops chasing the Argo in order to scoop up the pieces of his son for a proper burial. The Argo sails away. Now, the big man himself, Zeus, he's not too happy. He tells Medea and Jason that they're going to perish unless they cleanse themselves. So Medea calls on her aunt Circe to perform a ritual to clean them of their sin. They traveled 30 days to reach Circe, and when they did, 
She sliced a goat's throat, spilling the blood onto Jason and Medea's hands. Zeus ain't mad anymore, but FYI, I don't approve of your actions either. She's like, you know. This makes Jason start to think that possibly he and his crew have all been cursed. This thought, of course, soon confirmed, because once they get back on the open water, King Aetis, Medea's father, catches up with them, and Jason feels that he will be chased for the rest of his life, always looking over his shoulder. So, he decides to marry Medea and take her virginity in hopes that Aetis will no longer try to get his daughter back. And that seems to work. So, with all this misfortune behind him, Jason sails for home. But, by the time Jason gets back to Icos, he finds that Peleus has killed his family. And naturally, Jason wants revenge. But the city is too well defended for so few Argonauts. Now, Medea... Being the good wife she is, tells the Argonauts to go wait on the beach and to look for a torch on top of the castle. This will signal that Peleus is dead and the doors will open. So Medea then sneaks into the chamber of Peleus' daughters, whom she convinces that she could make their father young again. She proves it by sprinkling some magic herbs into a cauldron, cuts a ram's throat, pouring, it into the, uh, pouring the blood in, and shazam, she pulls out a baby ram. The girls, of course, decide that their father must be made young again, and they ask Medea for some of the magic herbs, which, of course, she gladly hands over. The daughters beg their father to perform the ritual, but he says no and dismisses them. You want me to what? You're all crazy. Just get out. Get out of here. His daughters don't take no for an answer kindly, so instead they shove his ass into a cauldron of boiling water, but no magic, and he dies. Now, with the king dead, Jason expects to ascend to the throne. However, he's now being blamed for the king's death, and along with Medea, is banished from the kingdom, while Peleus' son, Acastus, is crowned king. Jason and Medea find refuge in Corneth, thanks to King Creon, and spend ten years there, where Medea has two sons for Jason. And Medea is happy. Until King Creon wants Jason to marry his daughter and leave Medea. Glaus is young and beautiful, and of course, this is finally Jason's chance to be king. King Creon doesn't recognize Jason's marriage to Medea, and Jason doesn't really need to be persuaded. Creon banishes Medea from his kingdom, but she asks the king to stay just one more day to handle her affairs. King, king, king Creon is like, well, okay, big mistake. Now remember, Medea is a sorceress. So she conjures up a magnificent dress that could be worn by the gods or a queen. She gives the dress to Glaus, and just as soon as Glaus puts the dress on, poof, she bursts into flames and burns to death. Then Medea takes her and Jason's two sons to Hera's temple. She proceeds then to stab both her children in their hearts. Meanwhile... Jason, sleeping under a tree in the shadow of his ship, the Argo, is then crushed to death by the ship's stern, which magically, oopsie, snaps off. Medea, of course, then pulls a Kaiser Sose and disappears. Now, legend says she married Achilles in the afterlife. But that's another story. Well, that was good.